Uh, righty -o. so question four, they will start off by giving us an equation and its initial weight. And they've given me the overall weight equation for this, which is quite nice of them. So overall weight of reaction is going to be 2 plus 1 plus 2. So it's going to be uh, 5 overall. Yeah, that's right. Um, so this one comes up lower. A proposed mechanism takes place in several steps. Two reasons why it's unlikely it could take place in one step. Well, in your weight equation, we just said they've only got five things in my weight equation, but in the overall equation, I need five iodides and iodine, 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 and five H pluses. So what appears in the, as reactants in my equation doesn't appear in my weight equation. So they must take place in more than one step. Any other reason, do you reckon? If you think about the likelihood, if it took place in one step, I would need five iodide ions, an iodate, and six acid ions, H plus ions, all to apply at the same time. It's kind of unlikely, isn't it, that I've got 11, 12 particles actually colliding all at once. So it's highly unlikely that I'm going to have 12 reactor particles all collide at the same place. So, first thing is that the, all the reactants don't appear. In, you haven't got the same as uh, stoichiometry in the uh, reactor position in the weight equation. And secondly, it's unlikely that they're all going to collide at the same time. Um, now, you do need to know your weight concentration graphs. Initial weight with iodate ions, what order did we say it was for iodate ions? First. Uh, this uh, one. So first. first, yeah. Um, so that's going to be a straight line. What about for H plus? H plus is second order. So if we go through, key thing is it must start at the origin and go first order. And then this one starts at the origin and goes in a cup. Like that. So if we have a look at this table, second order, first order, second order, uh, that we got from the overall equation. Go for experiment one to two, that stays the same, that stays the same, but this one is times by three. So what's going to happen to the initial rate? Remember it's second order. Three squared is nine. So what do I need to times that 0.6 by? Nine. Nine. So it's actually 5.4 there. Yeah. So looking at experiment one to three, that to that is times by four, that to that is times by four, and that to that is times by four. So it's second order for that one, so it's four squared. First order is four times by second, uh, this one, which is four squared. So it's four squared, which is 16. So 16 times 4 times 16, that comes to 1024. So it's going to be 0.6 times 1024, which gives you 614.4 as being all right. So they want me to find a weight constant here. So if I use experiment 1, it's good to use experiment 1 because they're giving you all the values there. So you just substitute these values in. So the weight is 0 0.60 is equal to K. I minus was 0.015 squared times by iodate, which is 0 0.010, times by the hydrogen concentration, which is 0 0.020 squared. Right, so we multiply these out, we get 9 times 10 to the minus 10. Then it's 0 0.6 divided by 9 times 10 to the minus 10. That gives you, notice they want it to two significant figures, uh, 6.7 times 10 to the 8 is equal to K. Now, the tricky thing really is they want the U pit here. What do we measure right here? Uh, mole, is it mole per DM minus 3 seconds per second? Yeah, cool. Is equal to K. 
concentrated always measuring moles per decimeter cube. And I've got squared, so overall that's to the power of 5. So the units of K, moles per decimeter cube per second, divided by moles to the power of 5. What do I do to that decimeters to the minus? Okay, so one of those moles will cancel out with one of those, so that becomes moles to the minus four. That's gonna, well, that will cancel out to become decimeters to the minus 12, mm -hmm. if that goes. Yeah. So your overall units are moles to the minus four, decimeters to the 12, seconds to the minus one. Right, yeah, so they're bringing in a bit of acid to work here. So the student repeats the experiment using 0.02 moles of methanoic acid and the humidity K instead of PHCl as a source of H plus to determine the initial rate. So the first thing I have to work out is my concentration of H plus. Okay, so um, what's the equation for H concentration of H plus in a weak acid? Is equal to the square root of Remember the pKa times the concentration? So that's the square root of 3.75 times the concentration, which is 0 0.02. So the first thing I'll work out is I'll work out Ka. So Ka is going to be 10 to the minus 3.75. So That equals 1.78 times 10 to the minus 4. Then you can work out your concentration of H plus as equals to Ka times the concentration. So 1.78 times 10 to the minus 4 times your concentration is 0.2. Square root that. So once you've worked that out, you've worked out H plus, you then can determine your rate by using K, which you've just worked out, times the two original concentrations from experiment one, times your new concentration of H plus, which is B squared. And uh, that comes to 5.33. So question five uh, about transition elements. Um, two period four D block elements from Scandium to Zik are not trans are not also transition elements. Why is that so? In your answer, you should link four electronic configurations to your explanation. So the two which aren't are actually Scandium and Zinc. So the first of all, you need to explain that in order for it to be a transition element, um, it must form an iron with a partially filled D subshell. Um, then you get a mark for saying it's scandium and zinc, which are transition elements. And the reason why is that scandium forms only the scandium 2 plus iron, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And zinc only forms zinc 2 plus, which has that electronic configuration. So why, why are these not um, transition elements? Well, that one doesn't have any electrons, no electrons in the D subshell. And this one has a full D subshell. So neither of them are partially filled D subshells. So that's why those two are not transition elements. Yeah, you, you should know that one really.
Oh, uh, so now give me a nice little ligand. How can it act as an identate ligand? It's because the nitrogen, both nitrogen atoms, have a lone pair of electrons on them, which they can donate to a uh, transition metal. So they have two pairs of electrons that they can donate. That means they have a bidentate ligand and they're on the nitrogen atoms. Uh, write the formula of the complex iron A. Complex iron A has got cobalt in. It's got two of these um, ethane diamine ligands. So NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. It's got two of those. It's got two chloride ion. It's cobalt three plus. So what must be the overall charge? Plus. Yeah, because each of those chlorides are minus. And what is the coordination number? Coordination number, of course, we know is six because it's got uh, uh, six. So it's really important. Just make sure that you've got your uh, wedge going. You know, your dash and your wedge going out. Uh, obviously, when you've got your bidentate, the cis isomer. also has optical isomerism as well. So that would be your cis. You then draw the optical isomer, and then you've got your trans with the two ligands as well. So the three marks, that's what Oh, right, so some more wordy ones around. Explain how ligand substitutions allow hemoglobin to transport oxygen and blood. Well, it kind of shows you um, in the equilibrium uh, there, um, in terms of the oxygen, O2 binds to the iron ion in haemoglobin. Um, it's important to get it, it's the Fe2 plus iron. Um, and then required, the O2 molecule is substituted for water. So when it goes to areas of the body which has a lower concentration of O2, it gets released and a water molecule pops on. Um, if they want K stability um, for this one, um, really not too bad. Uh, K stat is going to be the concentration of HbO2 aqueous over concentration of Hb aqueous times the concentration of O2 aqueous like so. In the presence of carbon monoxide, less oxygen is transported in blood. So just why in terms of bond strength and stability constant. What can you say about the ligand bond strength from carbon monoxide? to iron 2 plus compared to oxygen. It's yeah, it's a stronger coordinate bond. And what does that mean about the stability constant? The stability constant must be higher. Yeah, so you can cover those two points quite easily.